Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's the entire message this morning. That was the entire message this morning, uh, and only God was able to work that out. Uh, but that was beautiful and, and a great message. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Uh, my family and I, we, we were, last night we were in the, in the living room, and uh, we wanted to watch a movie. And uh, we sat down, and we were going through uh, some different different movies that we thought might be good, and we were looking at a, a list of these different Christian movies that, that we're looking at, and, and uh, uh, we're going through, and it's, that one be, would be good, that one would be good, uh, that one would be good, but, uh, but I don't feel like crying all the way through it. You know? <laughs> uh, and we eventually ended up on one we, we, that we thought would be good, and guess what? It was Fireproof, okay? I don't know. You, you, we watched Fireproof last night, and um, you know what? I'm, I'm 40, and I don't know what it is about 40, but I'm a mess when I, as, a, as a 40-year-old. <clears throat> I have just been a mess over anything and everything. <laughs> um, but we watched Fireproof last night, and, uh, you know, it, the, the movie is about a failing marriage, uh, and, and uh, the, the man in the, in the marriage, uh, the husband receives a book from his, from his father and, uh, and goes through, and, and partway through reading this book as it's trying to work on his marriage here, he receives Christ as his personal Savior, which, I, you know, he's in a little park, and there's a cross in the park, and, you know, his dad is there, and he receives Christ, and I'm just hiding myself because I don't want to be embarrassed by these two. They're making fun of me, uh, but I was a mess, and um, when, when you're a guy and you're crying, you, you're not crying. You're just having some allergies, right? That's, I mean, that's the easy way to get out of it. It doesn't work all the time, but, you know, we try and say that we're, we're just having some allergies. It's getting close to springtime. You know, the, the, the weather is a little warmer this week. Uh, but uh, anyway, my 40th year, I've noticed that I've been a little bit messier this year, a little bit more allergies. But uh, let me say this. We as human beings are emotional, some of us more than others, but we're emotional, and God gave us the blessing of emotion. That's an interesting thing to think about for a while, that God gave us the blessing of emotion. We also know that Adam and Eve brought sin into the world, uh, and sin taints all parts of life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. Uh, if we know that God gave us the blessing of emotion and that sin ruins God's blessings, then we could say that because of Adam and Eve and our innate sin, that we as human beings can get messed up and we can get hurt emotionally and mentally. I'm going to give you a part of my, my week a couple of weeks ago. Um, let's see, two Sundays ago on this day was the 14th, and it was that Sunday morning that it was, you know, Everything was real cold. Uh, it was, it, there was a freeze the, night, the day before. Um, and uh, so I went out to the car. I was going to drive in myself that morning and get here a little earlier than the, than the girls so I could try and get, uh, you know, the property ready and get salt down and get ice, you know, uh, shoveled up and that kind of a thing. And so I went to take our little, little Honda Civic, and it was sitting outside, and um, I went to grab the door handle, and I, and I didn't think anything of it, but as strong as I am, I ripped the door handle right off the car. That was not a good start, all right? Um, if y'all want it, I'll, I'll auction it off later. No. Um, <clears throat> also, within the last week and a half or so, whatever it might be, uh, we've had some carbon monoxide issues at home, which has been fun. Um, and uh, the alarm went off. We had, we've had the firemen the, the, to our house twice. The first time, it was just one engine. The second time was two engines that came to the house. So it was exciting. We got some pictures and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, we tried to share Jesus Christ with them. Amen. So, you know, at least there's a, there's a positive right there. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we also found out, uh, let's see, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, something like that, that uh, a former... Um, pastor's wife that, that we know uh, had a brain aneurysm and was very serious and was rushed to the hospital. And, um, and, and then beyond that, we, let's see if I have everything here. Oh, let me just say this real quick. The Sunday that, that the door handle broke and I drove in separately and all that, or I, I would try to drive in separately, I didn't. Um, I found out after the service, and this is my own fault, but my wife had texted me several times that morning, that morning, um, hey, um, are you coming to get us? We're not sure if we have a ride, you know, that kind of thing. 
they walked to, work, to, to church that morning. So after service, I'm, I'm like feeling like a horrible husband. <laughs> um, but they, they said that they had a great time walking in the snow and, and it was fine. And then beyond that, uh, again, um, uh, more seriously, we found out that a dear friend of ours uh, almost lost her life. Um, again, just the week that, that I had. Uh, and so my question to you this, mor- this morning is, have you ever had one of those days or one of those weeks or months or even one of those seasons? Uh, we can easily get bogged down. Life takes some wicked terms, turns uh, sometimes, <clears throat> and, and, and maybe it's in your own life. Maybe you have things that are happening around you where you see struggle, where you see trial, uh, where, you fe- where you feel pain because of it all. Um, and we see that in David's life. David's life was a life of ups and downs. There were some major ups in his life, but there were some also some major downs. Um, let me give you a, a story real quick. Someone in, a, someone in one of our previous ministries, um, I'll call him Gavin. Um, this, was one of the, this was the bad character in the, in the movie last night. But uh, Gavin, uh, this is not a bad person in real life, but I'll call him Gavin because I want to protect his name and, uh, and his privacy and that kind of, kind of a thing. But Gavin got, got bogged down in life. He had a lot, a lot, a lot of potential for life. He was a great kid. He had a compassionate heart. He was respectful. Um, but sometime after he had graduated from high school, <clears throat> he called us in the middle of the night. He was sitting in his car outside of his house. And because there's children in, in the room, I, wanna, I want my, my adult friends in here to pay real close attention for just a second. Gavin was done with everything. Our 3 a.m. phone call uh, continued on with Chris, my wife, uh, comforting him and talking to him as long as she possibly could, and me on another phone, with ni- uh, on the phone with 911, trying to get them there as fast as they could. Um, Gavin was failing at life. He believed that his uh, sphere of influence, his amazing parents, and he had great parents, his friends, all that who were, who, who were around him would be better off if he were not there. Uh, in the days following, he and I spoke several times in counseling. He eventually ended up at a great, a great Christian help uh, program in place. Uh, and it was the beginning of God really working and really turning things around in his life. But here's the question. How did he get to such a point? How do people get to such a point? And I know that this may sound a little too simplistic, but here, listen, if you're in the middle of something deep, if, uh, you know, your, your problems may not necessarily go away, but the following is the basis for help in your life. And here is what Gavin forgot. He forgot that simply Jesus loves him. Jesus loves him. And I think that we've all been in that place, maybe not to that degree, but let me tell you that when you pray, know that you may not be okay. You may not be okay, but Jesus is. You may not be okay, but Jesus is. Listen, as a pastor, I have visited people in a padded room. I have visited people in a mental institution. I have talked them down from driving a car into a tree. I've been the first person to arrive after a loved one dies. I've been there to comfort those before surgery. I've been the only one in the room when someone goes on to eternity. I've, I've talked to a church member, uh, not here, but I've talked to a church member on a ventilator when I was not sure whether they could hear me or not. Uh, I've been up in the middle of the night with teenagers talking to them about their lives and, and trying to counsel them as well. I've also seen and, and poured my life into it, adults and teens alike and then seen, seen them go a different direction and pull away from Christ, go completely the opposite direction. But in all of these things, in all of these different situations that we could go into, understand and listen in in your own life as well with whatever problems, great or small, Jesus is the source of the answer for every single problem. Every single problem, Jesus is the answer for the source. He is the source of the answer. I should say it that way. Let me ask you this. How many times is this the case for you? There's a superficial conversation conversation that that may take place, and and you're asked the question, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm fine. I'm okay. 
We try and answer honestly, but honestly, it feels like it's easier to tell a simple lie. There are some moments, some days, some season when, uh, where when someone asks me how I'm doing, I should say, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I may look fine, I may talk fine, I may act fine, but if I'm honest, I'm not always okay. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. And honestly, when we have that realization and, and be honest with ourselves and understand then to, to realize that, that you're not alone in that. Uh, and I, I really believe that it's a little bit dangerous to avoid talking about this type of subject. As a, former, as a youth pastor here and a former youth pastor, let me tell you something. There are many young people who are hurting. Okay? There are many students, maybe not here, maybe here, maybe not here, but in our community who wrestle with anxiety, with depression, and even more serious thoughts. And it's a troubling thought. It's a troubling thing that, that, is, that this is the case. And you know, we can correlate that back to themselves and say you know, it is problems that they have brought in uh, in and of themselves with sin and things like that. And yes, that's true. And, and we can talk, look, at, look at the rise of, of, uh, of social media and, and the correlation, the direct correlation between teen depression and, and the rise of social media. But it is there. It is there. I've also found that adults are just older teenagers. Shocking. <laughs> Adults wrestle with the same problems teenagers do. The difference is, as adults, it seems to be harder for us to confess our problems. We don't want to admit when we struggle. I want to, I want to just give you a quick look at this next slide on, on screen. Go ahead, guys. That's, that's the kind of look that we have. I'm okay, but, but you see his face. He's not okay. He's not okay. Uh, let's take a look at the next slide. I'm okay. Is he Okay. No. How many times do we do that as adults? And we just put on that facade. I'm okay. As human beings, we struggle with emotions. We struggle to remain or to become healthy. Here's the truth bomb. Ready? No one has it completely together. No one has it completely together. Uh, there is a wide range of what each of us struggle with daily, just things that come into our lives, maybe things that may be more long-term. Uh, there's a side of this battle that is emotional in nature, nature, and there's also a side of this battle that might have something to do with brain chemistry. And we could talk a long time about you know, medication or not medication and, and this, that, and the other thing. That's not r really the focus this morning. But let me give you uh, something here. Uh, if you're familiar with Shelley Hamilton, uh, Shelley Hamilton is Ron Hamilton's wife. Ron Hamilton is, is Patch the Pirate. Uh, but Shelly posts the social media often. And I don't look at it often because um, I'll just be honest, I don't have the time very often. And she writes some very <laughs> long posts, okay? Uh, but uh, you'll, you'll get an inside track and kind of see what's going on with the Hamiltons there if you, if you take a look at their social media. But Patch the Pirate, Ron Hamilton, he has a sick brain right now. Uh, and I don't say that lightly. It's a sad thing to watch. Uh, and, and you watch her and you see her faithfulness and see, you see her joy that she has in spite of it. And it's uh, convicting to watch and it's encouraging to watch. Uh, and, and listen, I'm not a therapist. I'm not here to give anyone therapy. Uh, but here's what I am trying to do. I want us all to know this morning uh, that we need to be, maybe become more aware of others' burdens. And maybe that we need to develop a piece of empathy. But I also want to give hope and help us to see that we have support in struggle. We have support in struggle. Sometimes we are unhealthy mentally or emotionally. Uh, and there's a, maybe a relationship between the two. What, and and the, so the question is, what do you think is the relationship between mental health or, or emotional health and, and spiritual health? And, and I wrote down three statements, and I said this. I said, you can be spiritually healthy and struggling emotionally. You can be poor in both, and you can be healthy in both. Or you can be spiritually struggling and emotionally healthy. And let me go back through just real quick and kind of give you an example of each. Uh, you can be spiritually healthy and struggling emotionally. And we see that in the life of David. Okay, we see really maybe all three of those, those situations, but we see uh, him being spiritually healthy but struggling emotionally. We also see uh, Cain. We take a look at the life of Cain, and we see that he is poor in both. 
struggling spiritually and struggling emotionally. We can take a look at Elijah and, and see that he is spiritually healthy and emotionally healthy. And then for the last example, you can, spiritually, you can be spiritually struggling and emotionally healthy. Spiritually struggling and emotionally healthy. We can take a look at some unsaved, right? Some people that don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They are spiritually dead. Emotionally, though, they, they, might, do, they might be well. Uh, they might be successful in, in whatever their professional career is. They might have a, a good relationship. They, there may be positives, you know, in certain seasons of life. So we can take a look at a person that may be unsaved and call them spiritually struggling, spiritually dead, uh, but emotionally healthy. And I do think it's possible that a spiritual struggle can lead to a mental illness. Not every mental illness has a spiritual component. Uh, and it's not true that if you're depressed, you're a bad Christian. Our spiritual health provides another facet of health to our whole self. Healthy, spiritual, uh, healthy spiritually contributes to wholeness. Listen, your physical health has a bearing on your mental and emotional health. Your physical health has a bearing on your mental and emotional health. I have heard the more physical issues you'll, you deal with, the more chance there is for a mental struggle. You can also overcome these physical issues mentally and emotionally and then be spiritually and emotionally healthy regardless. Um, and, and I can give you a couple of examples. Uh, I started having ringing, ringing in my ears in 2009. It's 2021, so let's see. I've had 11 years of ringing my ears. It's never stopped. Um, don't, don't feel sorry. That's not, that's not why I'm saying it. But you could have felt sorry for me in the beginning because in the beginning when it first started, I thought I was going out of my mind. <laughs> and Google is not your friend, okay? Can we just say that? Google is not your friend when you have something going on. Um, I did visit several uh, physicians and doctors and, and found out, guess what? You just have ringing in your ears. Thumbs up. All right, good. Um, then, let's see, at age 33, 34-ish, something like that, um, I went to the doctor and, and said, hey, previous football injury from high school, uh, your right knee, again, this is 33, 34, um, your right knee is, is shot. You know, it's bone on bone right now. Your next step is a partial or full knee, knee replacement. And he sent me out the door with a brace and said, hang on as long as you possibly can. And I said, okay, perfect. So I'm, I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm doing okay. Um, then, let's see, just a couple of years ago, my jaw right here. <laughs> I woke up one morning, I, I got the shaving, and I thought, it doesn't feel like I'm shaving anything right now. <laughs> and so my, my face went numb right here. And... Um, and I thought, okay, that's, that's weird, that's interesting. Long journey after that, months and months and months, more doctors, more things. In the end, guess what? My jaw's numb, that's it. Nothing, nothing else. I, went, I did crazy stuff. I had the needle go into my spine and draw out fluid, and I was on my back for three, week, three weeks, and all kinds of craziness. But in the end, it was just a, 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 a numb jaw. So, you know what? I mean, God has, has put some different things in, in my life, and there's different things that I could talk about as well. And, and you all know the struggle uh, and the trial that we went through in 2009 when our kids were born. Uh, and, and so different things come into your life, uh, and you can uh, get down and you can get bogged down by these different things, or you can decide that Jesus Christ is bigger. Amen. Right? Amen. Jesus Christ is bigger than these things. Have you ever heard someone say, but God. I could say that for every single one of those things. I've had this horrible struggle in my life. I got into an accident, or I, I, you know, I got burned, or you know, I got fired from a job, or you, know, you could go into anything you want to and say anything you want to, but remember that Jesus is bigger. But God, you know the verse but God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Wow. Amen. My friends, that is bigger than anything that has ever happened in your entire life. God has shown his, in his word some pretty difficult things. Uh, some pretty difficult, difficult things have happened, and, and we could see some pretty difficult words 
as well, even about himself, and I'll, and I'll let you, uh, we're going to get into that. God's word shows us the spiritual side of emotional health. Just like our lives are often raw, we're going to see some pretty raw emotions here. I want to show you a glimpse into an honest, raw range of, e- of human emotions as they're seen in the Bible. And we could go through the Bible and we could take uh, 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 some different folks in the Bible and different people in the Bible and we could look at Saul or Jeremiah or Elijah or Moses or David or Jonah or Judas or Jesus or Paul or Peter or John and and we could talk about a slew of others uh, and and see how all of these had conflicted emotions in their own lives. And then we can ask ourselves, maybe we resonate with somebody in this list. Maybe we resonate with something here. But I want to give you some some psalms. Most of these psalms are are David's psalms. There's a couple of them that are not and and are unknown. But let me give you this in Psalm chapter 25, verse 16. And I'm going to go through quickly. If you can get there, awesome. If, if not, if you're listening, that's fine as well. Uh, but Psalm 25, verse 16, Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive my, all my sins. We see in uh, Psalm 42, I'll just read you verse 11. It says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Then I see in Psalm 143, verse 7, we could go through the whole chapter there, really. But verse 7 says, Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And then in the night season, I am not silent. There are example after example of times that we see in the book of Psalms and we can look other places where people are hurting just like we have hurt today, just like we have pain today, just like we have distress today, again, different levels. Maybe it's a daily dis- discouragement, or maybe it's a, 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 a longer time period. Maybe it's something physical. Maybe it's something emotional. Maybe it's a re- family relation type thing. But we see the same type words that maybe we would say to God today. Can you believe that David, King David, wrestled with, with emotions like this? Uh, this was a man after God's own heart. David wasn't perfect, though. We're not perfect. David wasn't perfect. Many of his laments and psalms of despair appear as a result of his own mistakes. David is a good example of when spiritual illness can lead to emotional and mental illness. It was not long ago that I was reading through all of the psalms and praying at the same time, or really, uh, I was reading through the psalms and, and being caught off guard by God's word piercing into my heart and convicting me of my life and and comforting me in my life as well and then crying about it (laughs) and then calling out to God in prayer as a result of the whole thing. Um, That was an amazing time. It was a a number of months ago, but I remember reading through Psalms and, uh, you know, Psalm 1, Psalm 2, Psalm 3. Psalm 3 was a kicker for me, Um, I remember. Uh, And going through and, and just reading and seeing God work in the lives of David's life and others in, in the Bible, and then, and then relating it back to my own, and then you know, just being convicted and comforted and crying out to God. But we see these struggles that, different, uh, that, that, that these psalms give us. Um, but let me, let me give you this next. Next, let, I'm going to show you what is perhaps uh, the darkest psalm, song prayer in the Bible. It's pretty raw. And it's still, you know, the 1611 English, but, but if you read it and read it honestly, you'll see that it's pretty serious. The Bible speaks, uh, if, uh, if you're in the struggle with your emotions and, and in your life, if you're dealing with something today, this is the Bible speaking your language. Uh, this is in our uh, Bible because it shows us that we demonstrate faith in God even when we direct our rawest most honest prayers at God, trusting that he hears them. So it's Psalm 88. Uh, at the top, it says this. It says, A song, a psalm of the sons of Korah, to the choir master, according to Mahalath, Leonoth, a mascal of Heman, the Ezrahite. And it says this. I'm going to read the whole chapter. If you're with me, that's cool. Uh, verse 1. O Lord God of my salvation, 
I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shout the dead arise and praise thee. Selah. He's in a pretty low place, whoever this is. And he's wondering whether God is even listening and, and, and maybe even accusing God of part of his affliction. Verse 11, shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Sounds a little facetious, honestly. Or thy faithfulness and destruction? Verse 12, shall thy wonders be known in the dark and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee I have cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintance into darkness." And that's how the chapter ends. That's a hard chapter, right? I don't know if you've ever been in a place that's been a hard place, but if you have, I think that chapter relates. We don't know the end of the story, uh, you know, from this person here. We don't know the end of the story, but at this point, the person still has great potential for recovery. Emotionally, spiritually, relationally, whatever else they're going, to, going through. And you say, well, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite all that is going on in his life, and that we just read about, who is still being spoken to? Is this poor soul shut up? Has, has he gone completely internal? Has this person pushed everyone out? No. They're still crying out to God. So the conviction for me in my life is, hey, listen, don't forget that God is there. Because even this guy in Psalm 88, who's gone through this crazy, unbelievable thing, whatever it might be, and, and you can see the crazy uh, 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 position that he's in and the affliction that he's dealing with, he's still crying out to God. He still knows that God is there. Let me give you this. Despite some unbelievable struggle found in the Bible, and Psalm 88 is, is near, that top, near the top of the list, humanly speaking, I'm going to give you some, some hope. Psalm 34, 18. That was our scripture reading, or scripture reading earlier. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite or crushed spirit. The Lord is nigh. So let me ask you a few questions. Do you have some home struggles? The Lord is nigh. Do you have physical struggles? The Lord is nigh. Do you have relational struggles? The Lord is nigh. Do you have job struggles? The Lord is nigh. Do you have school struggles? The Lord is nigh. Do you have money struggles? The Lord is nigh. You have any other struggles? The Lord is nigh. It's a powerful psalm with both despair and hope. But I want you to hear today that, listen, uh, it is not a sin to struggle. 
It is not a sin to feel overwhelmed or to feel abandoned or to be disappointed or to be depressed or exhausted or, sur- or, or feel surrounded. It is okay to not be okay. But listen, if you're searching for emotional or mental health or peace or stability, remember and have hope that the Lord is nigh. And listen, if you're in a place this morning and you're like, yeah, you know what, this, this is good. I don't really feel that I'm in that place. I feel pretty good. I, I feel like, you know, I'm living for God. I'm trying my best. Walk alongside somebody that needs help. There are people on that road, probably not too far from you. Give them hope. Don't forget Jesus' words. Don't forget his words as it says in Luke chapter 5 and verse 30. It says, But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you drink and eat with publicans and sinners? Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Listen, he came to teach, he came to die for us, but he, uh, he also healed people everywhere he went. His priority for healing was always on the spiritual. But time and time again, he just demonstrated that he has power to heal any illness, any ailment, uh, and even death itself. Um, and, and listen, we are all broken. We all come from a place where at one time we were unsaved. And hopefully, and, and praise the Lord, there are many of us in here that are saved but we're all broken, and the, the thing that, that uh, the Pharisees didn't realize is that we are all broken. We are all, all broken. Uh, Jesus sees us. Jesus sees you. Jesus hears you. Consider uh, this, this parable as well in Luke chapter 18, uh, verse 1. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now listen, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Listen to this in verse 2. Luke 18, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Men ought always to pray. This guy in this parable uh, this judge, he, he, didn't fear, he, he didn't fear God. Uh, he didn't really care about this woman, but she went to him and went to him and went to him and asked him and asked him and asked him, please help me with my problem. Please help me with my problem. Please help me with my problem. And eventually, it says, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Yes, by her continual coming, she weary me. How much more does God want to take care of us as his own children than this unrighteous judge wanted to take care of the widow. We ought always to pray and to not faint. God hears you even if you're at the point of the Psalm 88 prayer. Even if you're at the, Psalm, at the point of a Psalm 88 prayer, God hears you. So here it is. It is okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay, but... When you're struggling with your emotional health or your mental health or your physical health, take God with you. Take God with you through that trial. I'm going to give you a quick video. Do we have that, guys? I want to take, I want to take a moment just to show you this quick video.
Think about something for me. Jesus dies. If that were the end, would that not have been the single worst thing that would have and will ever have taken place in all of time? You know, we think about our own struggles as deep as they may be. But what about God dying? If that was the end of the story, then wow. What do you think the disciples were experiencing? They went back to their lives. They were discouraged. They spent three years of their lives, and now uh, the one they were following was dead. That's worse than tinnitus or tinnitus or, or a bad knee or a numb face or heart disease or cancer or anything else that you can think of. God was dead. The disciples weren't listening. They figured it out later. Jesus rose gloriously from the dead. But listen, my friends, we know the end of the story. If, if, if you're here this morning and do not know Christ, if you do not have a heart relationship with him, then understand that he loves you. He offers healing. He offers purpose. He offers grace and mercy. Don't forget that you have a loving God in the middle of your struggle. When you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling isolated, when you're feeling desperate and hopeless, I'd encourage you to please reach out. Reach out. Listen, Jesus was dead. Is your struggle worse than the God of the universe being dead? And if it ended there, again, that would be the worst thing ever. But God had a plan for the worst thing ever. And listen, I mean, this is, this is a big thing. If God had a plan for the worst thing ever, that his son, Jesus Christ, was dead, he had a plan for it. If God had a plan for the worst thing ever, don't you think that he's got a plan for your ailment, for your struggle, for your trial? God's got a plan for everything in your life. Jesus was dead, and he had a plan for that. He's got a plan for you as well. God gives blessings through his word and through his people. We're here for you at Community, Community Baptist, and remember that the Lord is nigh. This morning, we need to remember that Jesus loves us. Jesus can save us from our own lives. He can save us from our own lives. The Lord is nigh. The Lord is nigh. Let's bow our heads, and we'll be done in just a few minutes here this morning. If you're here this morning and you are saved, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you two things. I want you to think about praying for healing in your own life so that you can be a more impactful part of God's program here at Community Baptist. Pray for healing in your own life in whatever, whatever area it may be so that you can be more impactful, a more impactful part of God's program here at Community Baptist. And then the second thing, my friends, is this. Pray for those here that may not know Christ. There's most likely someone here like that with a crowd this size. Pray for those that may not know Christ. And then listen, if you're here this morning and maybe you were interested in a little bit of what I said this, evening, uh, this morning, uh, maybe even convicted of what has been said, but maybe you have no idea where to start. And maybe if I asked you, if you were 100% sure that you would have a home in heaven one day, and you told me anything but, yes, I'm 100% sure, and here's why. If you have another answer besides that, listen, God tells us that we can know 100% sure that we will have a home in heaven one day. 1 John 5, 13 and 14, it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Listen, this morning, you can know 100%. If in your mind you're thinking to yourself, I'm not so sure, I might be 99%, I might be, 90, I might be 50%, I might not be uh, sure at all in my own life whether I, have a home in, uh, whether I have a home in heaven one day. The Bible says that you may know that you have eternal life. 
And then after that, guess what? This is for my saved friends and for my potentially saved friends. In the next verse it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Man, that's an encouragement this morning. Take God with you in your trial. Take God with you through your time of of struggle. When people get to the end, like in the example that I gave in the very beginning, when people get to the very end and they feel like they have nothing at all, the one thing that they have forgotten is that Jesus loves them. They have forgotten to take Jesus with them. Thank you for joining us for part of a Sunday service at Community Baptist Church. I hope to meet you soon. May God impress His love upon your heart this week.